Bobby Doomer. Hey guys. An interesting interview involving Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman where they discuss how they became friends and what's going on with them in general has dropped recently, so I thought I would share it with you. Before we start, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and please consider visiting my Patreon page and signing up to support my work for as little as $5 a month. In turn, you'll receive nice perks like having your name or brand displayed on my videos or requesting custom content. You will find the link in the description. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Okay, so where to begin? You <laughs> I, I, I just want to be clear, I have nine publicists here. So yeah, nine careful. publicists, yeah. each of which equipped with a taser <laughs> aimed squarely at me. Um, okay, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, me. You'll agree with the first part of this question. As a true Hollywood narcissist, I'm going to ask you a question <laughs> about you that's really about me. <laughs> <laughs> What is your first memory of us meeting? It was on the set of Wolverine Origins. Yeah. And we were outside of Sydney. We, I remember there were millions of cranes. We were shooting a night shoot. It was meant to be Africa. We were yeah. shooting Africa. And we were out there and I just remember running into you and I was so, so grateful you were there. You'd flown in. You'd just flown in, right? I just landed. I think landed. you just I landed. Was completely jet But also I'd just been cast. That's right. I like it, I, yes. I don't think I'd, I. I didn't. Yes. I only found out I was doing it. Yeah. At, at, at three weeks before. Two. Yeah, because we'd asked a lot of people, but you know, <laughs> a, lot, <laughs> a lot of people to play Deadpool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we. Um, I remember that. I remember thinking he because you landed that morning. I know what that's like when you come in and how tired you are. But it was a night shoot. Your first night. Yeah, so it was perfect. It was. No, because I remember. I just remember being blown away by you being there. I was so excited to meet you. And so thrilled you were there, and and we needed you. I remember that day very well. We absolutely needed you. And I have some memories of that day too. I, I was going to ask. In fact, it may be my first question. <laughs> what, what, but what is? Yeah, tell me about your. Well, I remember there. showing up in Sydney. That was the biggest movie I'd ever worked on at that was point. It really? Oh man, I was. I mean, it was. Mm. I was blown away. It was so intimidating walking onto that set. I was nervous as hell. I didn't know anyone or anything about it. And I was walking through the trails, jet lagged, disoriented, feeling really green and kind of out of my depth. And there was no script to look at. It was just like, what's gonna happen? And I saw, I heard my name, Ryan, in, in between these trailers as I was walking, all this red clay, you know, as I remember all that. That's stuff. right. And it was you. And you, just the fact that you knew my name <laughs> meant so much to me. I, it, no, it really did. It was all the difference. You said, Ryan. And, and, you know, you, you came over, you gave me a big hug and you said, welcome aboard. And, you know, this is going to be great. We're going to make, you know, it's all going to be fine. We're going to, you know, make you comfortable, whatever you, you know. And I just remember what a consummate host you were, but I also learned so much about what it means to lead a set, what it means to be gracious to not just the people that can change your destiny, but everybody. Mm -hmm. I watched you know the, every member of the crew's names, every, have a, a working dialogue with every single person part of that crew and those people and how you interjected yourself into the creative process mm, nice was man. so beautiful to watch and how everyone around you felt so seen. And I honestly, it left the biggest impression. I mean, I thought, man, if I'm ever even remotely lucky enough to be in Hugh Jackman's position in life, these are the lessons you want to get into your DNA as soon as humanly possible. Thank you, man. And then who well, knew that, that now my stardom would completely eclipse yours. Yeah. <laughs> and, completely. Yeah, and you would Thanks. just be, you know, one of the many grunting stepping stones I've used to hoist myself up into a And I remember the first day of this and you came, you did the same thing. You came yeah. over and you went, Steve. I was like, Steve. so good to see you. Greg. Greg. No, don't tell me. <laughs> Do not tell me. Um, but, but it was, I, I, I got to say that you, you left, a, uh, you left an, an impression on me that was absolutely indelible on what it means to be a movie star, what it means to okay. be a, a leader. Okay. Let me just return a compliment. We're starting being sincere. So I remember one day I saw you sitting on the steps of your trailer at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're right. You know, so he goes, I could have done that better. I, 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 there's just so many things I could have done. The elevator. Yes, it the, was elevator. the elevator. The elevator. Scene. There, was, and there was nothing again written. Yeah. It was just the team goes yeah, up yeah, in the yeah. elevator. Yeah. And I think the director said, you know, just let's banter a little bit. You look really nice today. 
It's the green. Brings out the seriousness in your eyes. Oh my God, do you ever shut up, pal? No, not when I'm awake. Anyway, you were sitting on there and I knew that look. I said, are you okay? And he said, it could be so much better. I said, you want to go back and do it? He goes, I would kill to go back and do it. And they were unplugging. I said, let's go. And I walked straight back and I said, we're not done. Let's go. Yeah. And what was shot then was what is in the movie. Is what's in the movie. And I'll never forget that, how gracious it was to to take on the responsibility of telling everybody who thinks they're going home <laughs> that we're just gonna go back and we're gonna get this right. And you did it. And I and I, and I tell you, it's something that I think of I've and all the movies that I've produced since have paid forward. In fact, one of them, <clears throat> one of the things I learned from that moment was working with an actor on our movie, Deadpool and Wolverine, and saying to him, What what would you do? on the drive home from today. <laughs> That's so Go do good. The, do that right now That's in this so take. That's so good. And he just kind of went, yes. And he went and he did something completely different. And, yeah. and, and it's in the movie. It's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. so. Thanks, yeah, man. A lot of awesome. lessons from that. I, I did really well because I complimented you in a very narcissistic way. It turned into a compliment for me. <laughs> did, yeah. So this is a question that I think people might want to know from both of us. Um, what's it like being over the age of 45 and trying to look like a superhero and move like an even younger Tom Holland. <laughs> Lola. I'm, a, la, 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 Lola. I'm aiming to move like Tom Hollander, <laughs> who's a little bit older. Uh, I love that you somehow bracketed us together in that question. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. generously by saying yeah, well, over 45. Sure. You can say 55. Yeah. It's 55. okay. 55. Well, 55. I have some insight into you being 55 and doing Deadpool and Wolverine that I, I was, <laughs> let me start then. Uh, I have, I couldn't believe what I saw with what you did physically for this movie. Not just the aesthetic transformation, that's amazing, that's incredible that anyone could do that, but just the sheer relentlessness that you dedicated yourself towards stunts, mm. choreography. Mm. I, I, it was the first time I'd ever seen how invaluable, and I hope any young actors are listening to this, how invaluable uh, background in song and dance is mm. when you are doing an action movie. Yeah. You hit your marks in those fight scenes with speed and confidence, the likes of which I have never seen. I don't mm. care if you were 25, mm. 35, 45, mm. or 50. I could not believe what I saw. Let's go. Thank you, man. Brian Smurz, uh, who's a great second unit director. Yeah, you know we Brian. worked with him together. Exactly. Yeah. He was the first person to tell me, he said, I, every time I hire a stuntman or someone's coming up, I say, do dance class. And they yeah. go, what? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to learn to smash a car and ride a motorbike yeah. and jump in. And he said, but there's a mixture of relaxation with yeah. the strength that you need. It's basically a choreography. And so to, to take a punch, it's more about the relaxation than the uh, grunt mm -hmm. of it. And it's true, I, so I approach stunts in the way I would, if I, I mean, I'm not a dancer, but I have done a lot of dance training now mm -hmm. and dance in my job, and I love the, the process of it. Mm -hmm. I love getting something into your bones, learning something. You, you watch something, you get it in here, and how does that get into yeah. your bones, you know? And so I really loved it, and I, I had got to the point, I must admit, probably 10 years ago, I was like, I'm not enjoying it. Like it was mm -hmm. hurting. Yeah, it was yeah. tough. And I, but I've had a break. Yeah. And I've been doing a lot of dance. I've been doing stage shows and arena shows. And so when I came back to it, it was really fun and I was thrilled. My body was a little sore at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But I was thrilled and my body was still responding. Oh, and I yeah. realized how good it is for your brain. But the hardest, the hardest bit, I'm going to ask you the same question because I've seen you and I've trained in the gym with you and I've seen your dedication. I've seen how hard you. You work at the diet and how hard you work on everything. The food. I yeah, have to the food eat is hard. a lot for me, for mm -hmm. my body type. I'm naturally skinny. Yeah. To get the size on. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest bit. That's yeah. the bit that does my head. Yeah, in. that's me too. That's, that's the, 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 yeah, the five, six meals a day. Yeah. You know, that, which sounds great to some people. I'm sure they're like, well, that sounds great. But right. you know, it's not like it's not the type of food that you would really necessarily enjoy. But no. I, I, I find that, that um, you know, one thing I've learned as I've gotten older uh, in this business is to really, especially in movies that I'm producing and, and writing, like Deadpool and Wolverine, is that you listen to the movie. And I know you know this with all with your vast experience as well, but I, I noticed that in the film that we would change things quite quickly. We would yeah. say, okay, let's try this and that. Yeah. 
and particularly the physicality. I was convinced when you were coming at me a few times, like there is no way this guy's pulling his punch. I will be decapitated by Hugh Jackman and that will be his can cross to bear, not mine. <laughs> I do remember um, you saying, there's a lot of repressed rage in there. Oh dude. man, it's your id. <laughs> it's like right there and it is as authentic as anything. When Hugh Jackman is coming at you at 150 Australian miles per hour, yeah. you feel like you. there's no way you're not gonna be dead in four seconds. And I will never forget that. And thank God I'm in a mask because under the mask, my face is going, oh God. You know, you're you're being, first of all, you're so generous. On it. And the way you, thank you, I appreciate it, I'll take it. But you're under, you're sort of under, no, it's my job to ask you, mate. What you do is unbelievable. It's the subtlety of it too. It's the comedy. I had no idea until I worked with you that really what you're doing is classic mask work because you're in, the, you're in a mask. It's clown but work, yeah. Clown work, yeah, yeah. you have to be so expressive. That, as opposed to that, is a laugh. Yeah, yeah. And that, I watched how meticulous you were and how Sean would work with you. He said, uh, he said, I see what you're doing, but you need to have your face up more so I can see in the camera. Mm -hmm. But for you, it's the hands, it's the feet, it's the whole body position. It's yeah. everything because this is funny, that's not funny. This is communicating that and your meticulousness with that, I, I have it. never, ever seen before. I love it. It's just clown work. I love yeah. clown work. I love vaudeville. I love expressing yeah. things. Silent movies I watch a lot. I mean, I love that yes. idea of expressing without speaking, even though Deadpool's the merc with the mouth, he doesn't stop talking. Right, but even then, but I, the rhythm yeah. of the way you speak is the character. Yeah. It's sort of like, I can tell part of you click, goes, that's it. Whether it's the verbal rhythm yeah. of a line, yeah. of the timing, or even the physicality. You go, ah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's all kind of, I always think of it just as constant writing. The movie's just, Deadpool in particular, is just never stop writing. You just, you're writing yeah. through the edit room. I mean, and I love watching you in the edit room too, because there's so many, there's a couple of moments where I've the, I'm most proud of myself if I can make you break. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a scene in our movie where it's a, actually, you'll never know it as we watch it, but it's actually a split screen because we're taking you from another uh -huh. take and we're using me in this take because I, we liked what I said, but you cracked up and Is I, it the... it's one of my favorite. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it has to do with dog pool. Got it, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, it was just one of those great, yeah. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, moving. So another thing that we mm -hmm. have in common is mm -hmm. uh, gracing the cover of this magazine as uh, I believe this says World's Sexiest Man. I thought it was universe. <laughs> Sounds very scientific. Uh, <laughs> what was your reaction when you found out that you were the world's sexiest man? Who did paid you? for this? Yeah. <laughs> How much did this yeah. cost? Did you demand they show their work? <laughs> How did you come up to this I need to know, what are the metrics? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've known it for a long time, yeah, yeah. but how did you finally yeah, yeah. discover it? Four billion headshots <laughs> they went through, uh, <laughs> and they got to yours, and they were like, that's the guy. I don't know about you, and the word sexy never, did the word, like, were people describing you, let's say you're 19, so, okay, pre-doing anything in the business, girls, no, do I, they ever go, oh my God, well, this I, guy's so sexy. No, so, no, so, but I wasn't a working actor. I was, a, I was, I was working uh, intermittently at 13, but then right. I drove a forklift, I worked in grocery stores, I right. did all those other, you know. So you weren't turning stuff. up in parties and was like, ah, that's, that. that's that guy from, no, nobody, you know. If anything, I got the opposite, which was like, a, I saw that guy in, the, in that movie of the week, right. you know, with so and so from you know whatever Falcon Crest or whatever that you know, um, where so I was I seventh would, banana, you know, on the. On I the, was like, let's say my group of mates growing up, let's say there's seven. Yeah, I would have been voted if I'm really honest. On a good day, three, like number three, I might yeah. have got a bronze medal. <laughs> Definitely, but probably, yeah. probably just above average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But around there. So if also, I'm struggling in my group of friends yeah, from yeah. school in Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How, How is this? Scientific? 10 years yes, later I become, know. I mean, that's the world. But also improvement. I, I, if, if that was like what the sort of your, your, your MO or your operating system from 18 or 19, I don't know that you would have cultivated all these other aspects of your personality. True. You would just been like, well, I'm handsome. Hey. Can't I, of course I can, you know, <laughs> of, course, of course I can operate on your medulla oblongata. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Okay, what was your reaction? Yeah, it was just mostly funny. I don't, you know, yeah. um, you know, I had a lot of fun with it. I had a lot of fun with yours. I think I stapled you sure your did. picture to it's my face movies. in Deadpool yeah. 1. Yeah. Um, and it was great that you got it. I mean, I did a lot of campaigning for you. Yes, I don't know. You did. Do you know that? Yes, what a lot of, behind the scenes? Yeah. Weirdly, that's such a weird super mm. pack. 
uh, to have the People's Sexiest Man <laughs> Super PAC. Like apparently like there's like hundreds of millions of dollars in that Super PAC. There's a lot of money. Propping people up. There's a lot up. of money. Yeah. 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 And the, the smart money wasn't on you. And I said, you're wrong. No. This Every year it's guy. Hemsworth <laughs> or Denzel. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. True. Um, I got, okay. So as a fellow immigrant yes. to this land, yes. um, what do you miss most about Australia? Australia. Definitely the people, my family. Mm -hmm. I don't see my brothers who live there nearly enough. That, that my best mates. And I miss the food. I miss the ocean. Mm -hmm. I'm in the ocean, I can get that anywhere. But my lifestyle in Sydney, I wake up, coffee, unbelievable coffee. I, j I work out, I jump in the ocean yeah. as the sun's coming up. And we watch the sun coming up in the ocean. And I think, why am I not here every morning? Yeah. I miss that. What about you? For me, with Can in terms of Canada, what do I miss? God, I miss, I find Canada to be incredibly restorative to me. Uh, mm. uh, I don't really hide the fact that I, Canada is just so ingrained in my DNA. I mean, it taught mm. me to, the, the country seems like a, a, an additional parent to me, it really mm. does. I mean, it taught me to laugh at myself, never yes. take myself too seriously, but then take yeah. myself seriously when it matters, you know, in the, in the right That's ways. True. But um, it kind of, I think I came to show, I think I would have been eaten alive in show business early on in my career had I not kind of been raised by Canada. Here's something I've never asked you. What about the kids? Like, it was a really important thing that they felt part Australian. And, and I'm really proud of that. My kids are, I think if you ask them, they'll say, well, I'm Australian. Yeah. And they'll say, no, I'm American too, but I'm mm -hmm. Australian. Yeah. How are you with the kids? Is that something I love for that. you? Yeah, 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 my kids are very much, they, they have their Canadian passports as well, and yeah. they feel like a real connection to that. It's yeah. a point of pride of, of theirs. They've also spent huge amounts of their formative years of in, in Canada, and particularly Vancouver. I mean, yeah. we shot uh, Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2 there. I, I had yeah. only one child in Deadpool 1, and I had two on uh, yeah. uh, Deadpool 2. But um, hopefully we don't do a Deadpool 8, because I don't want 8. <laughs> Uh, kids, um, but um, yeah, but they they uh, like no, they love they love they love being from Canada. They tell people they are. You know, oh, I'm, Do I'm they half Canadian, half American? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Um, oh, mate, you've been pretty open with your anxiety struggles, which I really applaud you for. Yeah. Do you find being a dad makes it better or worse? I think it makes it better because your focus is less on yourself and more on your kids. I know you know that too. Yes. And then I love. That I've now I love that I have anxiety. I love that I've had anxiety because when I see my kids experiencing some of that, which I, is probably genetic, yeah. I know how to address it in a way that is compassionate. Yeah. Um, I know how to address it in a way that actually f allows them to feel seen in that anxiety. And I know that I can't just fix it, and and I can communicate all that stuff hmm. to them and with them. And I, I so I, I'm always kind of grateful for it. and you know my my job benefits greatly from that you know people who have anxiety are constantly thinking into the future you're constant what if this happens what if that happens what if this happens right. what if that happens right. so you're you're always telling yourself stories so when you're yeah. working in movies and you're constantly sir i'm i'm not just like when we're shooting deadpool and wolverine i'm not just shooting the movie i'm also sitting in the audience as its yes. harshest critic yes. going mm -mm, i don't i don't like that I don't buy that you know so yeah. anxiety kind of creates that sort of ecosystem of awareness that I wouldn't otherwise. I really applaud you for it. I think it takes courage to speak about it and it's helped a lot of people because a lot of people come up to me yeah. talking about you oh, well. and I say, shut up, I'm not interested. But yeah. they keep talking <laughs> about you. But that a tracks. lot of them will say that and say, yeah. I can now tell my son, I can tell my daughter, yeah. I can, it's helped me, you know? Yeah, I think men too. I don't know why men have an issue talking about their feelings as if I don't, you know. I, I recently, it's a change for me, talk to my kids. I, ha I was a little bit old school. I thought, don't burden them if you're anxious. Mm. And then all of a sudden someone said to me, he said, but when you get anxious, say you've got an opening night or you're hosting the Oscars, mm. for three weeks before my mind mm -hmm. and I go a little distant. Mm. And he said, but your kids don't know that you've got the Oscar. That's why they did. maybe they're thinking yeah. you're mad with them. They've done right. something. And I was like, oh, no, 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 really? Yeah. And so now I will now say to them, I, I had to make an uncomfortable phone call yesterday. And I actually just said to my son, son I said, I've got to make this uncomfortable phone call. If I, I'm a bit nervous about it. If I seem a bit off, hmm. well, that's why. And he goes, oh, great. Oh. And then he, he said, how yeah. did the call go, Dad? I said, yeah. I feel so much better. Like it was, and he feels a part, because you're his hero. He feels right. a part of your world as well. I, I, it's, it's Sean Levy actually told me something that stuck with me forever, too, is that 
people tend to only talk about their wins. Hmm. But I think it's really important for your kids in particular to know that you lose. Right. You know, you, you don't get what you want all the time. Something you worked on really hard didn't work. Yeah. Uh, something you feel like you made, you said something embarrassing today. You did something that didn't yeah. sit right with you. It's just, it's so important that they see that and they don't just hear about, oh, I, dad nailed it. You know, like, because yeah, right. you lose so much more than you win. True. Uh, but anyway, Sean gave me that and it's, it's really stuck with me. We've been friends for like almost 20 years. Yep. What's the secret sauce to a long lasting Hollywood friendship? I think the secret sauce to a long-lasting Hollywood friendship is is not too dissimilar to uh, uh, having a partner, a marriage as well. It's your gen. I mean, since the day I met Hugh Jackman, I am genuinely rooting for you hmm. every time, mm. all the time. Like I, I want you to win, and I know you to be a person Sorry. that often puts others in front of yourself. And, I, I, it's, and it's not a show, I see you do it in quiet, I see you do it loud, I see you do it in every instance. And I think of you a little bit as this guy that kind of like, you know, will grab the, the ticking time bomb and fly away into the, uh, into the atmosphere, into space and let it explode and, you know, and save all the people in the ground. They'll all, oh God, he saved us again, he did it again, he did. But what they don't know is that Hugh Jackman is now floating through space, frozen, cold, <laughs> alone and armless because a bomb went off. Um, but I, I, I so admire that those qualities in you and love that in you. And I, since the day we met in Sydney, I root for you. I just, yeah, just I want to too. see you live the most full throated life that you can possibly live. And I, and I, so I think it's not just the same way I feel about mm. Blake as I'm rooting for her. I know mm. she's rooting for me mm. and it's why we're so connected. So I, I think that's I probably maybe one reason. I don't know. That's, Again, beautiful, thank you, and I agree. I think for me, friendship is you feel, and why there's probably fewer friends in our life than we would say, yeah. that you can say anything to. Yeah. The stuff you're ashamed, embarrassed, mm. anything. And ever since I've known you, and I would say in particular in like the last 10 years, five, 10 years, we've had more time where we go for our walks, where because you're an unbelievable listener. I, I guess I'd, I hadn't put it together. Deep down, I know you're rooting for me, yeah. and you know I'm rooting for you. Yeah. So you can tell me anything, and I and I can tell you anything, and I don't feel like you're going to be uh, judging it or necessarily giving me the answer. Do this. Yeah. And I think that has been the key. Yeah, we rely on each other for yeah. the real kind of advice that you want, you know. And your apartment that you let me know. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the roommate that keeps on giving, <laughs> Hugh Jackman. I love you, man. Yeah, I love you too, buddy. So that was about it. Thanks for watching, and make sure to also watch my other videos.